So you heard about Kubernetes, but not quite like got what it is and why it is one of the best container orchestration engine. So let's try to find out answers to those questions in this video. Hello and welcome to Kubernetes Overview. My name is Srinath Chala. I'm a certified Kubernetes administrator. So in next few minutes, I'll try my best to explain what is Kubernetes and why it is one of the best container orchestration engine. So before you watch this video, it is required to have a basic understanding on containers, Docker and container orchestration engine. In case if you need a help with that, please do check the links in the description below. So without any further delay, let's take a look at the things you will be learning in this video. This presentation is divided into two parts. The first part focuses on what is Kubernetes, then we will look into where it is born and who developed it. After that, we'll discuss about what are its goals and who is managing it currently. So all this goes into the part one. Next coming to the part two, where we discuss about why Kubernetes is one of the best container orchestration engine. There we'll discuss about the largest deployment of Kubernetes so far. Then we'll look at the various stats to show why Kubernetes is a leading container orchestration engine out there. So with that, let's get started with our first part one, and that is, so what is Kubernetes? Kubernetes is an open source container orchestration engine to manage containers at a large scale. Kubernetes will provide all the features needed to run Docker or rocket-based container applications, including cluster management, scheduling, service discovery, monitoring, secrets management, and more. So Kubernetes is born and designed at Google. And later on, Google donated Kubernetes to Cloud Native Foundation, in short, CNCF. Since then, Kubernetes is governed by CNCF and maintained by CNCF. So CNCF is an independent organization and it gained a lot of support from major players in the industry such as Google, Red Hat, CoreOS, Microsoft, Amazon, Docker, and many other important players in the industry. Let's quickly go through some of the history behind Kubernetes at Google. In this slide, let's find out how Google manages its 2 billion containers every week. Containers are new to this world, but not for Google. They have been using these containers since more than a decade. It runs about 2 billion containers every week. As it might be surprising, Google runs its core products such as Gmail, YouTube, and Google search inside containers. As some of you are aware, Kubernetes was released in 2014. So how is Google managing all these containers since more than a decade ago? That's with their secret proprietary tool. And that tool is called as Borg. Also, the world got to know about Borg only after it released Kubernetes. So they have been using this Borg to create the cluster of servers, then deploy containerized apps and scale it as per the demand. So when Google saw the emerging container technology after Docker released its first version of Docker container engine back in 2014. So during that time, internally at Google, Couple of engineers along with Joe Bida, Brendan Burks, and Craig thought of coming up with a new tool from the lessons learned from the Borg and their more than decade of experience in the container space. And that tool now is called as Kubernetes. So Borg and Kubernetes might be similar in terms of features, but Kubernetes was designed and developed from ground up just like any other brand new tool. The code of Borg and Kubernetes is completely different. We can think Kubernetes is a slimmed down version of Borg. So currently, Kubernetes is a default container orchestration engine on Google Cloud. So that's a bit about the history of Kubernetes. So Google announced Kubernetes to the outside world by end of mid-2014. But the actual Kubernetes v1 was released around mid-2015. So around same time, Google donated Kubernetes to CNCF. So the people who are not familiar with 
Cloud Native Computing Foundation, in short, CNCF. It is a vendor neutral home for many of the fastest growing projects on GitHub, including Kubernetes, Prometheus, and Envoy. CNCF offers the official certification in Kubernetes. So, since then, Kubernetes was governed by CNCF and it gained a support from major players in the industry. As of this recording, latest stable release of Kubernetes is 1.11.3 and this version is released on September 9th, 2018. So when they initially released Kubernetes, they had few goals and considerations in mind. Let's see what they are. First, its goal is to empower application developers with a powerful tool like Kubernetes so that they don't have to interact with underlying infrastructure. Also, that reduces their dependency on operations team. Next, to provide standard deployment interfaces and primitives for a consistent app deployment. And the last one is, it is built with modular API. So what that means is, it allows third-party vendors to integrate their systems around Kubernetes technology and provide some of the commercial solutions to the operational challenges that we face day to day on running Kubernetes deployment on our own. Granger is one of the company which took the advantages of this and started offering services on top of Kubernetes, like deploying applications on Kubernetes and managing your Kubernetes cluster. And that's all possible because of Kubernetes modular API. Sometimes Kubernetes is also called as K8 in short. This naming convention traces back to early 80s where software development was still in initial days. So in 80s, there used to be a long word such as internationalization and localization. So to overcome those long words, developer prefers to use the shortcuts. So how are the shortcuts are formed? This is by taking the first letter and the last letter and number of characters in between. So if you take the Kubernetes, here the first letter is K and number of letters between the first and last letter is 8 and the last letter is S. So that's how you get the K8s. And the finally, Kubernetes was developed using Go language, in short, Golang. So that's about the Kubernetes. So this concludes our part one. Next, we'll discuss why Kubernetes is the leading container orchestration technology in part two. The first reason why you should consider Kubernetes even in the first place is, it is from Google. Google created this tool based on their years of learning experience with the deploying and managing containerized apps on at a very large scale. So if you look at the kind of features and sophistication that Kubernetes has, it clearly has that Google footprint on that. Google donated Kubernetes to CNCF Foundation and Kubernetes is now open source. Anyone can download the code of Kubernetes and make changes to it and use it. And Kubernetes has one of the largest open source community than any other open source tool. And that is one of the important advantage of using Kubernetes. Next, maturity. Second important thing about Kubernetes is its maturity. You see a lot of organizations who have moved to Kubernetes and you see companies like Walmart and Apple are already using Kubernetes. There are clusters with more than 2000 nodes. It comes with all that reliability you need. So it has been there in production for almost three to four years now. So that's how mature Kubernetes is. Next, its features. Actually, a lot of features that amount to the features of Kubernetes is overwhelming. By the time you get to understand and get your hands dirty about a specific feature, then there is a new feature of Kubernetes will show up. I guess Kubernetes is one of the most feature rich container orchestration tool than any other tools available in that category. Next, it is easy to integrate. Kubernetes has a modular API which allows you to integrate with any other third-party tools without any much effort. In fact, there are companies who have built solutions on top of Kubernetes, such as Red Hat OpenShift, Rancher. Besides that, Kubernetes is not just limited to run Docker-based containers. 
we can use rocket based containers as well. Rocket is another container engine created by CoreOS, which has recently has been acquired by Red Hat. Rocket is an interesting product as well as interesting alternative to the Docker. So Kubernetes works with all these container runtime engines and open to integrate with third party monitoring and logging tools. And finally, Kubernetes is an open source product which is mainly driven by its huge community around it. It is one of the largest open source project on GitHub and it is driven by nearly 2000 contributors and it has around 70,000 commits. So these are some of the main reasons why Kubernetes is ahead of all other tools in this game. Also, there are a few more reasons coming up in next slide on why you should consider Kubernetes as your container orchestration engine. And we'll see that in next few slides. I guess most of you heard about Pokemon Go. So when they released this game around mid 2016, they initially expected network traffic, let's say X. But when the game was released, within minutes, traffic surged more than 50 times than initial expectation. And that comes to 50x. Eventually, this unexpected traffic crashed the Pokemon Go servers. So at the time, to keep up with traffic, Niantic, the company behind Pokemon Go, took the help of teams at Google to move Pokemon Go to onto the Google Container Engine. So till date, Pokemon Go is the largest Kubernetes deployment on Google Container Engine. If you look at the Kubernetes meetups worldwide, there are more than 150,000 members in various meetup groups in 60 countries. These are certainly a very huge numbers for a three-year-old technology. And now let's take a look at Kubernetes on GitHub and then compare with another popular open source project, which is Docker. Here are the screenshots from Docker and Kubernetes from GitHub. If you compare these numbers, you can easily understand why Kubernetes is more popular open source project than Docker. As you can see, Kubernetes is start 40,000 times and forked more than 2,500 times and has almost 70,000 commits so far. So just to avoid misunderstanding here, Kubernetes and Docker are not competitors. Kubernetes uses Docker as container runtime engine. I'm comparing here because Docker is one of the most popular open source project out there. The key takeaway point from here is Kubernetes open source project is more popular than likes of Docker. Now, in the next slide, let's take a look at the graph of Slack users and job postings related to Kubernetes from its initial release. So here is a graph of Slack users. So to someone who are not familiar with Slack, it is just a group chat where users across the globe come together and collaborate on things they are doing. As you can see, they had about few hundreds of users at the beginning of Kubernetes release. And now it reached to more than 30,000. As of this recording, there are about 46,000 plus Slack users in Kubernetes group. Anyone can join. You can also join this Slack group and ask questions if you are having any issues with Kubernetes or need any help with Kubernetes. So that's about the Slack users in Kubernetes. And now let's take a look at the job postings related to Kubernetes. As you can see, that's a sharp line projecting to upward direction. So I guess people with Kubernetes knowledge and experience has a bright future ahead. And these are some of the companies running Kubernetes inside their environment. As you can see, there are some of the well-known companies in this list, such as Walmart, Viacom, Goldman Sachs, Pearson, New York Times, Apple, and more. I guess by now you should think about why Kubernetes is a leading container orchestration engine out there. And by the way, this video is just a starting point to the Kubernetes course. So before I end this, let me give you a summary of what I've been talking over the last few minutes. So coming to the summary, in part one, first we discussed about what is Kubernetes. Kubernetes is an open source container orchestration engine and it manages containerized applications at a large scale. 
and it provides all the features needed to run docker or rocket based containers including cluster management scheduling service discovery monitoring secrets management and more and then we discussed how google has been using containers since more than a decade there we discussed about borg and mentioned kubernetes was a slim down version of borg however kubernetes was developed from ground up also we discussed kubernetes was released around 2015 and later on google donated kubernetes to independent organization called cncf since then kubernetes was governed by cncf also we discussed about the goals of kubernetes and how it got its name as k8 in part 2 we discussed why kubernetes is a leading container orchestration engine out there to support that statement we discussed about few statistics from github slack search trend job postings and companies using kubernetes and now this video leads to our next topic which is kubernetes architecture in that video we'll discuss what goes inside the kubernetes architecture what are the components it consists of and some of the basic terminology of kubernetes link to that video is provided in the description below and finally thank you so much for watching this and i hope to see you in the next video